Hello and good afternoon. Holly Shields here reporting to you live from Calcine Studios in Sydney and you're watching the Mid Market Pulse. Stabbing a two-day session losing streak, Australian shares rebounded strongly from a seven-week low today, led by gains in financials, tech, telecom and property stocks. The ASX 200 benchmark index was trading near the day's high by the mid-session, with mostly sectoral indices flashing in green. Investors seem to have set aside concerns about the impact of the infectious Omicron COVID-19 variant on the economic recovery and instead shifted focus to the economic events. Reversing previous session losses, the NSX 200 was currently up 66, sorry, 86.20 points or 1.19%. The benchmark index opened high today, following a firm global cues and gained as much as 1.23% during the trade so far. As for the overnight movements, the US and European market closed higher, while oil prices rebounded amid hopes that the new coronavirus variant would have a milder impact on the global economic growth than the initially initial prediction. All three major indices ended high yesterday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 0.7%, while the S&P 500 rose 1.3%, and the Nasdaq Composite settled 1.9% higher. Then back home, the equity market witnessed broad-based buying today, with 10 of 11 sectors floating in the positive terrain. The financial space was the top performer, with a 1.7% gain, followed by telecom which rose at 1.3%, and ARE to tech consumer discretionary and industrial sectors also witnessed a surge in buying, with each gaining over 1%. Among others, energy, healthcare and consumer staples also traded higher with a modest gain. But bucking the bullish trend, the utility sector was the only loser on the sectoral pack, trading 0.4% down by the mid-session. The top performing stock on the ASX pack was diversified financial group Credit Corp, which gained 9.4% by the mid-session. Other top gainers include Mineral Explorer, Explorer Aracobra, Financial Services AMP, and Service Retailer Collins Foods, as well as law firm Omni Bridgeway. Then on the losing side, West African gold miner Perseus Mining was the worst performer, with a 2.5% loss. Other notable losers include steel manufacturer Blue Scope Steel, dairy and cheese business Bega Cheese, metal and recycling company Sims, and financial services group NetWealth. Now before we move on to the newsmakers, let's take a short break. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Calkind's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Calkind TV. Welcome back, Holly. This side, let's move on now to stocks that created a buzz on the ASX. First up, shares of Macquarie Group rose 2.5% after the diversified financial group updated investors about its share purchase plan. The investment bank said the SPP opened for the subscription on the 29th of October and closed on the 26th of November with more than 490,000 applications received from eligible shareholders. Macquarie is expected to issue around 6.8 million fully paid ordinary shares for $1.3 billion. Then AMP climbed nearly 7% after it unveiled details on its proposed DEEM merger and its strategic growth plans. The company said that the planned DEEM merger of its business, AMP and AMP Capital's private markets business, continues to make strong progress and the separation of its private markets business is expected to take place in the first half of 2022. 
Meanwhile, Australian debt via Credit Corp saw its shares surging nearly 9% at five in session after it acquired the assets of Radio Rentals from Thorn Group. The company informed its shareholders this morning that it had entered into a binding agreement to acquire the assets of the Radio Rentals appliance leasing business from the $60 million mark. The transaction is subject to completion adjustments and will be funded from existing cash reserves. And then shares of Westpac rose over 1% even after the bank was sued by the market regulator ASIC for widespread failings. Flanders said this morning that it had reached an agreement with the Commission to resolve six separate long-standing matters through agreed civil penalty proceedings filed in the Federal Court of Australia. And auto parts maker GUG shares entered into a trading halt pending an announcement regarding an entitlement offer. The company has inked a pact to acquire tow bars and trailer parts business Auto Pacific Group for $744.6 million. GUG will buy it from the Australian private equity investor Pacific Equity Partners. Well, that's all for now on the Mid-Market Pulse, but stay tuned for more on Calcine TV. Holly Shields signing off.